Everybody, excited to see you all. Uh, let's start off by all unmuting all at once, giving a massive hello and then Thank muting you. back down again so we know that down. everybody's we here. All right, so we'll you all together. Three, two, one. Hello. 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 Excellent. Well done. And then muting back down. Fantastic. All right, welcome everybody. So glad to see you. My name's Rachel. I am the one of the directors and founders of Jing Massage down in Brighton. And here on my other Hollywood Square, I have. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan, and I am the other director of Jing Advanced Massage and Training. Um, and I'm coming in from the actual institute. So I'm at the Jing Institute in sunny Brighton. And it's great to see all of your great faces and yeah just so excited about the questions and talking about this really important and ever engaging topic yeah so big well done to all of you for showing up we all know that the best therapists are ones who engage in their advanced learning so well done for making time uh we've actually broken the internet with this one so we had 900 people registered for this uh zoom and r which is really exciting haven't had that since covid time so no, and i was just having that moment when we said uh everybody say hi um because i think during covid was our our max which was like 2000 and we ended up having to run a couple of different you know platforms and as massage therapists you know technology was not the thing that drove our heart before covid now we love it now we're like great people can travel in people can engage with the topic we also love the idea that um you know massage therapy can be quite isolating right like we are all doing our best out there for our clients and want to work really hard for them and sometimes we don't always have other professionals to discuss things with so it's meant that using technology means that people can have a bit of time to do case discussions and engage with topics such as this one and do partnership work with great organizations like physique so it's amazing Yes, big thank you to Fazeev for being our partner in this one. Um, so just so you know, a few ground rules. Jing Zoom are very joyful. We love people to participate. So please um, put your questions in the sidebar. And as a start off, if everybody wants to put in who they are and where they're Zooming in from, that's great. It's also useful for us to know if you're a massage therapist, a physiotherapist, a chiropractor, a physical trainer or just a general interested person so we know uh, the mix of people in the room so if you just want to stick that in that is great as well um and any particular questions you have about rotator cuff we'll try and pick up as we go along uh we will try and keep an eye on the chat as we go along so please do put your questions in if i don't notice them then um one of our happy helpers will bring it to my attention and we will do our best to answer things um as we as we go along um, also, uh, we're speaking from massage therapist's point of view, 30 years experience each um, with me and Meg. Um, but we know there's lots of other professionals in the room. So we're really happy for people to put in different opinions or different bits of uh, ideas that they've got or clinical experience that all adds in the part. So hopefully we've got some expertise to bring to you, but we also recognize that you're all experts. So we also welcome all of your thoughts, feelings, opinions um, and ideas in the room as well. So totally opening that up. Oh, someone in there from New Zealand. That's exciting. Oh, he's going to be watching the Women's World Cup happening soon. Right, let's get on with the show. 
Um, um, Dave, maybe you can read out some of those things for me while I'm getting my PowerPoint so we know who's all the room. gorgeous people. Yeah. Um, the thing, sports therapist, great face massage from Kent, uh, fitness and scar work, fantastic Mike. Um, physiotherapist from Surrey, hi Jess, that's great, and neuro. Um, it's also super good for us to know if anybody's also been to Jing or interested in Jing or know who Jing is or if you've got any questions about Jing. Um, I've just been doing a bunch of interviews and a lot of people ask us like what Jing is, you know, it's a, what the name of it is. And, um, you know, Jing is a lot of things to a lot of people. And it definitely, I think one of the reasons we're doing this, uh, doing this and doing our conferences is it's a research institute, right? We don't get a lot of research in soft tissue work. So we support our university level graduates, our BTEC level six in clinical and sports massage to do research projects um, because we really feel that it is important that we add to what is effectively a dearth in soft tissue um, research. So, you know, that is what we're doing, but we're also community and we also are a platform for sharing new ideas that Rachel said. So oh, ballet fitness instructor. Fantastic. I know, it's fantastic. Great, great, great room we've got there. All right. All right. So on with the show, we are Jing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Jing Massage Institute down in Brighton. We've been going for 20 years and we teach everything from beginners courses right up to a three year uh, degree level, BTEC level six, uh, the only uh, degree level course for massage therapists in the UK. Very happy to be presenting this with wonderful physique uh, that if you are not getting their stuff, you totally should be. Uh, who are we? We're both here today, not always. So uh, I'm Rachel, that's Janet. Megan. I would say Meg wears a bit more lipstick than me. Uh, we're both here today in our new Jing t-shirts, actually. I this know, they're really year anniversary. Great. So we've got a love, our love Jing t-shirts on. Uh, and that's our book there that we wrote um, with uh, 30 years of our experience in it, Massage Fusion. So some of you uh, have that. Uh, why should you learn from us? You know, good question. What have we got to, to offer? Uh, so we've actually both got psychology degrees. Uh, I'm also a qualified social worker. I've got postgraduate diplomas. Most also got um, a postgraduate diplomas in law. Um, and we've both got associate degrees in massage therapy from the US. So in the US, it is a degree level qualification, which is where we both learned. Um, we've both been massage therapists for 30 years, so that's 60 years between us. Um, we're co-authors of Massage Fusion, uh, the Jing Method for the Treatment of Chronic Pain, which actually uh, happily, proud day, reached number one on the Amazon bestsellers physio category. Um, we've both been authors for 20 years. Our articles have been featured in Massage World, Today's Therapist, the FHT magazine, Holistic Health magazine, and the McTimony Chiropractic magazine. Uh, we've received some awards, which we were very excited over our career. So for outstanding achievement in the field from Cam Expo, that was actually two years on the run, which was unprecedented. And um, we've got awards for our excellence in teaching from the FHT. Uh, we've been awarded lifetime membership of the CHP for our contribution to the field. Um, and we've received the Holistic Health Award for the best training school. Uh, Meg has sat on the board for the CNHC, the regulatory body, and I've sat on the profession specific board. Uh, we've lectured all over the world. Yeah, so British Fascial Symposium for several years, McTimony Chiropractic Conference, Therapy Expo, CAM Expo, the FHT Symposium, the Centre for Osteopathic Professional Development, and more recently for online Canadian USA Massage Conference. We have developed the UK's only degree level course in massage therapy, which we've been running for about 10 years now. Very exciting. Put hundreds of therapists through that. And last but certainly not least, we are the founders and directors of the Jing Institute. We've been going for 20 years, still going strong, still passionate. Um, and we've had about 20,000 people who've passed under our hands in one form or another. So hopefully we have something to offer you here today. But as we say, we know there's lots of other excellence, expertise um, and different uh, ways of working in the but Rachel, I mean, that is quite a CV you put together. But I think also um, one of the reasons that it's great to learn with Jing, both online and in person, is that we are scientists who don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if you're interested in this, it's like, we can look at rotator cuff, which we're going to look at and the physiology and what's happened in the research behind it. But individuals are individuals and pain is complex. 
And so at Jing, we look at it from a biopsychosocial model and really understanding that you're dealing with individual, you know, individuals. And so when we teach, we have a bit of lightness to it as well. Um, that's the book that we've, uh, you know, love you to get that. You can get that from uh, well-known retailers. <laughs> you can actually not buy from Amazon. You can actually buy from a place called Wordery or Hive, which are much more right on than Amazon. Um, when we didn't have, we have control over most of the design things that we do in Jing, but we never had control over the front cover of the book. That was the publishers. And our designer always said it looked like, that's a picture of me doing a massage stroke. Our designer said it looked like I was in witness protection because- like, Oh, because your face was gone. <laughs> my face was blurred. Hilarious. Anyway, uh, get the book. It's great. A uh, little bit about Jing before we crack on with the stuff, if anybody's interested. As I say, we uh, offer courses right up to a degree level course, BTEC in um, BTEC level six. The first year of that is also a certificate in advanced clinical massage. So that is this uh, level here. So the year one is also a standalone course, which is a mixture of online learning and hands on and live Zooms. We also do an online version of that for CPD, which we're doing a massive offer on, which I'll tell you about in a minute if you've attended this. If you are a complete beginner, you can start with our 10-day uh, online and hands-on bodywork beginners. But I think most people here are at this level. So if you want to come and study with us, we'd love to have you for year one of the BTEC, um, which is the Advanced Clinical Massage Certificate. We also offer loads of CPD courses, so hot stones and... Um, pregnancy and uh, scar tissue and ribs, thorax, abdomen and things like that. Yeah. Um, this is what you get from a 10. So Physique, our lovely partners Physique, I've offered you a bundle. So some of the um, techniques we'll be talking about today that can be useful for rotator cuff, uh, use of hot and cold, a nice reusable pack there, um, tiger tape, in the bag so kinesio taping uh a little ball there that you can use for self trigger point treatment um, and some therabands so we'll be talking about some of those so if you want to use those for self-care and you want to get a nice little bundle from physique in a nice little bag um you get 25 percent off i'm not sure 25 percent off what but i clearly a deal any idea yeah, like a deal. The, i think the whole the deal is oh i see 25 percent off the actual object i don't know all right. OK, um, it will all be in the follow up email. Uh, we're offering you also loads of free things. So once you've done this, you'll be sent the recording and the slides from the recording. And also you get a free thing, which is show the good old chapter of the Jing book, Massage Fusion. So you'll get a lot of the techniques we'll be talking about in there. Um, you get half price off our online course for treating shoulder girdle pain. Yeah. So yeah. Run 250. Uh, you get £10 off for two of our virtual classroom about osteo rheumatoid arthritis. So that's just £20. You get £25 off a hands on three day foundation advanced clinical massage, which is the best way to start with us. Um, and you get an amazing £200 off our advanced clinical massage online course. Do you want to get that web page up for me, Danielle? I'm telling you all the goodies now because I always talk too long and then people have to leave and then you don't. And then they're like, what did I get? What am I getting for free? Mm. So our advanced clinical and sports massage course, it's a year long um, and you basically get loads of online content uh, when you sign up. You can do it in two ways. You can do it online only where it counts as CPD. So you'll get six of our modules for about the Jing method for treating chronic pain uh, as soon as you sign up uh, and you get a live Zoom every month. The uh, Zoom start in September. If you do the full thing, you also get three lots of four days hands on. So you start in September and I think the hands on days are probably something like January, June and September. Uh, if you do the full thing, you get an advanced clinical massage qualification plus a sports massage qualification, if that is what you want. Uh, full membership of the SMA, um, admission to the CNHC. Um, and as I said, we're giving a whopping £200 off the online version of that, which starts in September. So you can either do that by a payment plan. I think it's usually 1500 so that will make it 1300 and you can pay in installments over 10 months. So that would probably make it around 1300. I'm not sure. Um, or you can pay um, up front. Yeah, I think 
And uh, if you want to do a difference between the full ACMT, there's a nice little table there. Danielle will put the link to this website web page in the chat. So you get seven online courses in low back pain, neck and shoulder pain, shoulder girdle pain, forearm, wrist and hand pain, hip and pelvis, sports and event massage and leg, knee, foot. So you get that point of sale. That in itself is worth 1500 You get monthly Zoom virtual classrooms with the Jing team. You get that with the online only too. You bo both of them you can pay with monthly payment plans. With the hands-on, you get three, four days hands-on immersion. And you also get the accreditation uh, with the full hands-on for sports massage qualification. If you do the online only, uh, then that is a CPD. Um, you can also upgrade. So if you sign on for the online and then you decide you want to do the full thing, you can upgrade to the hands-on in January. All right. So that's our little gift to you. Uh, lots of freebies. Thank you, Danielle. Um, if you've got any questions about that, you can stick them in the chat and we'll... Um, uh, put them in the list. Uh, we'll try and answer them as we go Great. along. But otherwise, we'll get on with the show. Thanks for and, that. Um, I'm seeing some good questions about um, a shoulder that's been plated and people putting in questions around different clients. So I'm scrolling through that. So we'll kind of try to answer them as we go along. But if you have different questions, um, it's really great. And we might also ask you to unmute yourselves because we love actually having a discussion. Uh, rather than we love real people don't we <laughs> what was that conference we did where everybody had been told to like take their videos off it was horrible um, we sometimes we guest lecture for other schools and we were guest lecturing as the anatomy experts for a 200 hour yoga teacher training and they had a lot of rules around not unmuting themselves and bits and pieces and also maybe one of the canadian massage conferences um, yeah. they were so big they couldn't handle the tech and they were just like trying to make it more streamlined it's very weird lecturing we would love to see you and talk we love to see you so if you can put your video on that's we do love and it. i'm going through and seeing a lot of old friends which i'm sending lots of love messages to anyway go for all it. right we're okay so mastermind. we're going to start off with a bit of musculoskeletal mastermind so either on a pen or paper or on your computer because i know you're all on the computer uh, I want you to write down the answers, what you think to this, so what you know already. So true or false. So question number one, a torn rotator cuff needs surgery to fix it. True or false. Number two, if a rotator cuff injury is suspected, it is important to have an MRI. True or false. What do you think? Question number three, most rotator cuff injuries happen through sports where the shoulder is used a lot. Yeah, so those kind of sports where... Are you kind of doing overhead kind of stuff? Is that where most rotator cuff injuries happen? And number four, rotator cuff injuries need a cortisone injection. What do you think? Yeah. So we always say in Jing, it's not about getting it right or wrong. It's just about opening your mouth or typing in the box. Yeah. So if you want to type your answers in the box, there's a one, two, three, four. So you're looking at true, false, false, true, 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 false, false, true, you know, that kind of thing is what we're looking for people to type mm -hmm. in. You could even get into tease. Oh, look at the falses. The falses are popping. All false, some false, true, false. Was that, was that Emma was sort of like, I'm not sure, put a question mark. False, false, true, false, false, true, false, false, true, true. all false. False for all. All right. Okay. So let's see uh, what the research art says out there. Uh, and again, if you've got any other knowledge, please do pop it in the chat. All right. So first one, a torn rotator cuff needs surgery to fix it. Um, so there was a meta-analysis uh, that was done on 252 subjects. So a meta-analysis is a very nerdy piece of research where you look at some of the other pieces of research that are out there. Uh, and analyze that what it says and that basically said and there's other pieces of research to back this up there's limited evidence that surgery is not more effective that is a weird sentence isn't it I had to read that five times before I understood it um, but it actually is saying that surgery is not more effective in treating rotator cuff tear than conservative treatment alone so conservative treatment is you know rest ice you know, mobilization, the Off kind of things work. that we would be able to offer in terms of self-care. Um, but that's basically saying there's no difference between having the surgery and conservative treatment. Yeah. So that was one meta-analysis. Meta um, certainly some of the research that I looked at indicated that 
with younger subjects, if it's a completely torn rotator cuff, it might be helpful to have surgery to repair. But actually with older subjects, um, that was not actually helpful. And that was just as the outcomes were just as good um, as with uh, conservative treatment. Um, and there was one interesting piece of research that showed that um, people had had a rotator cuff um, uh, surgery that didn't work. Uh, we're actually just as satisfied as those were that it did work. Um, so the authors of that study concluded that maybe it's the physiotherapy and the rehab that they did afterwards that was actually helpful uh, more than this, more than the surgery. Exactly, Meg. Conservative treatment means less intervention. All right. Uh, there's some more pieces of evidence there that show that conservative treatment is equivalent to surgery. Um, again, you'll be getting the slides for that. So if you want to look that up in your own time, then you would be very welcome. All right. Do you need an MRI? Good question. So some of you might have uh, heard me bang on about this before, but what is interesting is that um, there's only a weak kind of correlation between symptoms, so whether someone's in pain um, and uh, whether somebody has injury to their rotator cuff. The same is true for herniated discs and various other structural issues that can happen in the body. Um, so there's only a weak relationship between being in pain um, and whether you have injury to your rotator cuff. So that can mean that somebody can have a very damaged rotator cuff and be in no pain whatsoever. And somebody can have a very minor injury um, and have a lot of pain. Yeah. So one study found changes in 80% of the supraspinatus tendons of asymptomatic um, baseball pitchers. Um, with no significant difference between the throwing and the non-throwing arm, yeah? So that basically meant that uh, baseball players without any pain had changes in their supraspinatus tendons under an MRI. Another study found no significant differences for the prevalence of partial tears, AC joint degeneration or tendinopathy in symptomatic versus asymptomatic Ironman triathletes, yeah? Uh, and one review reported that partial thickness tears of the rotator cuff were more common in asymptomatic volunteers than in individuals with painful shoulders. Yeah. So what that's suggesting is that actually MRIs are not actually that helpful because you could have a lot of damage on an MRI, but not be in any pain and be in a lot of pain and not have any damage. Um, as we'll see later, you know, it might be that some of those issues are due to trigger points, myofascial adhesions. But also there's a certain, certain situation with some people were like true, false, true, false. I think what the point, what the research is showing is that MRIs don't necessarily a give us um, like the diagnostic part of a diagnostic tool. So it's not very helpful as a diagnostic tool. Would it be helpful that people are seen? Maybe, but the tool itself is not going to give us any more direction on how we're going to treat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this next slide, we were talking about whether rotator cuff tears were more common in people who did uh, overhead kind of uh, sports. Um, so mainly the research is showing that uh, rotator cuff tears, they tend to be uh, one of two. So sometimes they happen in a traumatic way. So that is from a sport or an accident. Um, so there is some kind of correlation um, there. But a lot of rotator cuff tears actually happen more with age. Yeah. So the older you get, whether or not you're involved in any kind of overhead sport, the more likely you are to have a rotator cuff tear or de degeneration. Um, so in this subject, there was 664 subjects in the same village who were studied. Uh, 147 of them had full thickness rotator cuff tears. Um, in the 20s to 40s, there was no percent, 10.7 percent in the 50s, 15 percent in the 60s, 26.5 percent in the 70s and 36 percent in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and actually the asymptomatic tears, so tears with no uh, symptoms was actually 65 percent. So not all of that damage again actually resulted in pain. Yeah. Um, so again, there seems to, it's not necessarily related with um, sports or overhead activities or accident, um, that a lot of rotator cuff tears can actually happen, it seems, because of degener degeneration through age. And also, not all of those are problematic. 
steroids so interesting information um on that and again sort of the jury's a bit out in the medical profession about whether to uh, recommend um cortisone injections or not um so it seems that cortisone definitely helps can help restore function in the short term so if there's a lot of pain and people are not able to respond to um, exercises and rehab, then there might be some short term benefit on that. Um, however, um, it is pretty much shown now that the cortisone injections do actually weaken the tendon over time. Um, so actually, certainly having, uh, you know, lots of cortisone injections is not helpful and actually more likely to result in further kind of damage. And again, there's quite a lot of uh, evidence around that. Like, all right how did we do any learnings on that anything anybody wants to comment any different opinions or anything that you you know always interested it's great no? you can post or you can also um raise your hand on the gallery although there's a lot of people on here which is great so if you want to say something it's great if you put it in the the chat i think there's a lot of learning in that around also empowering your clients so a lot of us, I mean, there's lots of different professions on this, but often people do go to the GP and do think around surgical as an option and the cortisone injections because it's a quick fix. But as we all know, the preoperative and the postoperative are more important than the actual in intervention sometimes. Um, and also being able to deal with people's belief and their ability. So sometimes these tests um, somebody's asking about bone spurs in the shoulder joint on the acromion clavicular joint. So we'll get there. And then somebody wants to talk about plating when we get there. Which is great. Yeah. Glad you reviewed the big four as it was in my head. Yeah. All right. Um, a quick question actually around uh, bone spurs, Julie. Um, again, there's not a lot of evidence to show that bone spurs are necessarily related to pain. So is the same kind of thing on, um, you know, what the research is showing that a lot of these things like herniated discs or bone spurs, you can also get those on asymptomatic um, subjects as well. So they're not necessarily related to pain. When we talk a bit later about the biopsychosocial model, um, that will kind of make it a little bit clearer. Did you want to run through this slide, Meg, about um, bare bones and the muscles, rotator cuff? Or are you eating? I'm just having a little granola. <laughs> so um, we just go through what is the rotator cuff. I want to also engage with Rosemary's comment there around hormones and shoulder girdle. Um, we are in the process of looking at um, a women's health course, but I have to say we have had a couple of people do research projects about the correlation of rotator cuff and menopause and certain aging. So that's also something that's in play here. Yeah. So what is the rotator cuff, right? So what is the rotator cuff, Mag? We love to go back to a bit of basics. So the sits muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So they move the glenohumeral joint, but they also stabilize it. The glenohumeral joint has the greatest range of movement of any joint. Um, similar, but not, you know, the coxal joint, not really as much even though it's a ball and socket. So we're looking at something that has this great mobility, but has a lot of chances of being damaged. And the stabilization um, can be really thrown off by impact or overuse. Mm -hmm. An injury itself is an umbrella term for a strain, a tear, or a tendinopathy. Um, and we would say in our clinical experience, which I'm sure some of you also share, is a lot of people come in with a diagnosis, which isn't really apparent when we do a range of motion test. So sometimes people come in and they say that they've got it, a rotator tear, but the movement isn't correlate to what they think is wrong because people are hearing bits and pieces. And also people use Google as a great medic. <laughs> um, so you're showing me a lovely picture. So on the posterior view there, we have the supraspinatus living above the spine of the scapula. And then sub to that is the infraspinatus, a much larger muscle. And people tend to have pain quite a lot in the middle of the scapula there. And then the anterior view, we're looking at the subscapularis, which um, from this position, obviously the rib cage has been removed. Yeah. Um, 
I think the other thing to note there is like this space that the supraspinatus goes through, you know, you can see that a chromioplaviculid arch can quite easily be compromised, um, which may be one of the reasons why this is quite a common injury. It's also not uncommon for these ligaments to get damaged as well. Yeah. Um, so when you are assessing, um, we'll talk a bit about assessment in a minute, but you want to make sure you do active passive and resisted orthopedic testing because what I often find, particularly in like a traumatic shoulder injury, like someone's been goalkeeping and they've fallen on the floor, there might be supraspinatus damage, but there might also be infraspinatus um, and one of the ligaments as well. So don't assume it's just one structure. Yeah, it can be more. Um, that's a nice view of the supraspinatus. So well, supraspinatus, I like the one coming down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Supraspinatus is the number one muscle um, involved uh, often in rotator cuff injury. As we said, it's got this small space that it has to go through. Uh, anybody tell me what supraspinatus does? You want to put it in the chat? Little That's thing the action. Reason. Is that a hint, Meg? I was trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yay, well done. Jess Woods, well done. Yeah, so AB ducts, the glenohumeral joint. Yeah, so brings the arm out to the side and overhead. There's actually another muscle that does that. Do you want to stick that in the chat as well? Much the bigger one that muscle. we can see a bit more and palpate easier. Great, middle deltoid. Yeah, well done. Palpate. Yeah, deltoid also. Yeah, so those are the two major muscles of abduction. If you want to feel the, the supraspinatus, put your hand on your shoulder, feel for the spine of the scapula or on the back, which is that bony bit. And then you're just going to press through the trapezius into the, the supraspinatus and you might be able to feel it contract as you abduct the arm. And when you're doing palpation with clients or patients, it's really tricky to try to get them to isolate the different movements of the muscle. So when something's been damaged, I'm jumping ahead a bit, but when something's been damaged like supraspinatus, what they will ask for is trapezius to do abduction, right? So we'll be asking for this and then let deltoid kick in. So you want to really be able to take AB, um, like ask for a depression first before they abduct so that track comes out of the game. All right. So um, as we just said, rotator cuff injury is technically an injury to any of the rotator cuff muscles. Uh, the number one muscle tends to be supraspinatus. Um, often number two is infraspinatus, but could also involve subscapularis as well um, and good old ter teres minor. Um, so it can be a complete tear, yeah. Um, or if it's a strain, if it's a sudden injury, then it can be between grades one and four, depending on how many fibers are actually injured. Obviously, the more fibers that are injured, the longer it will take uh, to heal in the case of an acute problem. Um, in a lot of chronic problems, actually, as we'll see later, it might be that the, the structure is actually healed, but the pain is coming more from trigger points um, and other biopsychosocial uh, factors. But in an acute issue, uh, then this is what's going on. As I said before, there tends to be two ways. There's either the acute injury. So there's a, you know, something's happened to actually um, damage that muscle. Or you can get this degeneration over time, which is more of a tendinosis, which we'll look at um, kind of in a minute. And then, you know, you can end up with, um, you know, an actual more of an injury to the muscle. So signs and symptoms of rotator cuff injury, uh, obviously pain in the shoulder. It can also move down the arm, particularly when the arm is raised or lowered. Yeah. So that is abduction. And actually one of the tests for um, rotator cuff injury is called the drop arm test. So if you try and get your client to abduct the arm and then lower it back down, often they can't do the lowering back down. That's quite hard for them. And the arm just kind of slams down a little bit. Uh, limited range of motion, especially placing the arm behind the back. Uh, pain at night, particularly when sleeping on the affected side. Um, Obviously, pain at night can also be a red flag. So that also might be something that, you know, you would need to make sure got checked out by the GP. Uh, weakness in the shoulder. Um, so the pain may come on gradually. So if it's more that degeneration over time, particularly with older subjects, um, the pain might come on gradually. Um, but if there's that sudden uh, kind of issue, like in a sports, the pain may be se severe and sudden if the muscle's partially or completely torn. 
uh, causes lifting or pulling an object that's too heavy with a jerking motion around a client of mine got a rotator cuff injury. I'd actually interestingly been treating him for a neck issue and a frozen shoulder actually. Um, and that was getting better. And then he went and lifted a really heavy washing machine and managed to give himself a pretty quite heavy rotator cuff tear. Landing on your ass stretch. And chromiocovicular, we get a lot of people like dog walking, like a lot of pulls and tears forward um, where that rips and tears as well. Yeah. Um, lack of blood supply often caused by getting older as we uh, uh, talked to it, talked about before. Um, bone spurs, there we go. Whoever asked about bone spurs Julie, before. Julie Norris asked about Julie that. Norris, well done, Julie. So potentially the bone spur might contribute to uh, the actual, you know, wearing away of the tendon. Um, but as we said before, there isn't necessarily a correlation between pain and there being a bone spur, yeah. Um, and more common in the 35 year age group. So it doesn't apply to anybody here, clearly. <laughs> All right, so we talked about a rotator cuff injury. As we said, you can also get more of a tendinopathy, um, which is an umbrella term more for the degeneration or tearing of the tendon. Most tendinopathies are now called tendinopathies rather than tendinitis. It's believed that there's not as much inflammation as previously was thought, maybe a bit of inflammation, um, but not the same kind of inflammation as with an acute kind of injury. Um, and as we said, this is quite common because of this compromise kind of space here. Um, signs and symptoms are quite similar to the rotator cuff tear, um, you know, pain, worse with abduction, elevation or sustained overhead activity. Um, again, nocturnal pain, but again, get that checked out with the GP. If it's um, steady throughout the night, that would be a red flag. Decreased range of motion, decreased strength, and decreased functional activity. My chat box is now over the moving on button. Bear with while I move around my. There we go. Right. Okay. Um, Supraspinatus tendinopathy. Yes. So. The painful arc test can, this is a very simple orthopedic test that can indicate um, if there actually is a supraspinatus tendinopathy, is this painful arc? So often what we find with a tendinopathy is you get no pain, sort of on the first bit of the abduction, and it goes pain, 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 and then it's painless again, yeah? So if it's a tendinopathy, um, then you might get that presentation. You can check whether it is actually a tendinopathy by then getting your client to do what we call resisted abduction. So they press against you as if they're trying to abduct the arm. Yeah. And if there's pain with that, then that means that it's a tendinopathy rather than like a, a bursa or any other um, issue. There's a prettier picture of the painful art test that our designer did. It's a little bit more like Apple did it. I know, it's a bit cool, isn't it? Um. As we said before, just some uh, fun facts. It doesn't necessarily equate to pain. Uh, and one study showed that 30% of people between 50 to 59, 51% of people aged 80 above had complete or partial rotator cuff tears with no symptoms. Uh, right, we'll talk about trigger points in a bit. Um, and as we said before, exercise manual therapy and home-based exercise are all effective which is good news for us all right um a little bit more on the orthopedic assessment so as meg said a lot of people who come in might have a shoulder problem might even have been diagnosed with a rotator cuff injury but that is not what is actually going on in our clinical experience particularly with chronic problems there is no longer any damage to the tissues, but the pain is coming more from trigger points and other psychosocial factors. If there really is a tear or degeneration in the muscle, uh, resisted abduction will be painful. So if the supraspinatus that's affected, then that will be painful. If it's the infraspinata that's affected, then resisted lateral rotation would be painful. 
The empty can test is a simple orthopedic test. If you don't know these, by the way, just sign up for the BTEC level six because we do a whole module on orthopedic assessment. The empty can test, you hold the hand out, hand out to the side, yeah, AB duct it, and then you're going to rotate the arm as if you're going to can of coke that you're tipping out, yeah? And then as a therapist, you try and push the arm down. If it's weak or painful, that generally means that um, that, again, is positive. And then the drop arm test we talked about before, AB duct the arm, if they try and slowly lower it, Generally, they can't uh, really control that movement. Um, orthopedic tests are not 100% um, uh, you know, sort of effective. What's the word? What word am I looking for? Not effective, not 100% accurate. That's right. Um, so you also need to make sure that you um, take the uh, full case history as well to figure out what's going on. That is absolutely bribery about the orthopedic assessment in the BTEC. <laughs> um also if, the online shoulder girl course has got love in there as well it does yeah that's right not so much the orthopedic assessment though active range of motion active range of motion yeah all right so so basically we're looking at rotator cuff injury you've got an acute injury so that's where so that has happened suddenly from an accident or a sporting issue or you've got this more degeneration over time. And we would actually treat them slightly differently. So with an acute injury, again, we've banged on a lot about this in Jing. Um, so the main protocol that we use for acute injury these days is peace and love. Yeah. So the peace bit is kind of replace the, the rice, the rest eyes compression and elevation that uh, we used to talk about previously. So first of all, you protect the area. So just that's avoiding activities um, that increase pain. Elevation is still helpful if that's possible while resting. Interestingly, if it's an acute injury, you need to avoid anti-inflammatories in the first instance because they reduce tissue healing. And so you'd actually want to um, avoid that. You can use paracetamol or other non-anti-inflammatories uh, for pain relief. Uh, compression, elastic bandage or taping, if that's possible. Um, but the most important thing in acute injury is education. So reassuring the client, the body knows how to heal. You will get better. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. After that acute phase, then we move into the love, which is load. So really importantly, let pain gu guide your gradual return to normal activities. Yeah. And your body will tell you when it's time to uh, increase. So you're always encouraging people to work within a pain-free range. Optimism is massive. And as a therapist, you can be very instrumental in this. So we know from research that the more positive your mindset, the more likely you are to get better quicker. Vascularization. So anything that increases blood flow. Yeah. So they might not be able to do the sport they were doing because of limitations, but any kind of aerobic activity is going to help. Um, and exercise. Yeah. So that might be rehab in terms of strengthening or again, just any kind of gen generic exercise is going to help. Um, so that's how we treat uh, an acute uh, issue. So a lot of that is really around education um, of your therapist, yeah, in the acute stage. When we get onto the chronic stage, I always say that musculoskeletal medicine is a bit stuck in the dark ages. So um, apparently, I've never done this, but you can actually program your washing machine over your smartphone these days, yeah. Um, so we I was getting, I was working on the slide relationship what is the relationship between yeah, like the washing machine washing and the rotator out the shoulder. Cuff? yeah so technology enables us to do amazing things like send text messages across the world in the flash of an eye but if you look at actually the rehab um or you know if you look generically on the internet for how we treat musculoskeletal injuries it's really stuck in the dark ages in terms of, you know, might be a bit of mobilization, a bit of strengthening. There's not a lot of kind of new ideas in the field, if you like. So the big thing that I hope we offer at Jing is to really orientate people towards treating chronic pain. So when we're looking at chronic pain, that basically means an injury that has pain that is persisting beyond the usual healing time um, for an injury, yeah? 
Um, so what that means is if you have a client who comes in and says, I've got a rotator cuff injury and you say, when did the incident happen? And they say two years ago, it's very unlikely that there is still damage to that tissue because that will have healed. However, what might be going on is other factors. So we know from the biopsychosocial model that some pain might be caused from what's going on in the tissues. So that might be an injury or it might be trigger points. Some pain is actually ramped up by our thoughts and feelings. So how we feel about that injury and some pain is ramped up by the social context. Yeah. So maybe if you were doing a sport that you loved and you can't do it anymore, then that might be a big social context. Um, that um, means that, uh, you know, the social contacts for you in terms of uh, is going to be uh, more negative. All right. So we always have to look at all of these factors when we're looking at chronic pain. Um, Leslie's asked about does avoiding anti-inflammatories um, uh, mean avoiding icing? In that acute phase, yes, it does actually. So the newer research suggests that Pain is okay for um, pain relief. Uh, this is okay pain for relief. pain relief, but in the acute injury, you really want to avoid it um, in those first stages because you don't want to slow down the healing. That is newer research. Yeah. Um, so as we said, all pain is due to these biological factors, psychological factors. So that can include emotions. So if you're depressed or anxious, that can uh, increase those uh, the pain you're experiencing, pain related beliefs and catastrophizing. So this is something that we can do a lot about as therapists is to really reassure our clients around the healing progression, the body's program to heal. This is a simple injury. It's going to get better. So really calming them down about the progression um, of what is going on. And, you know, just doing a little plug, not quite a bribery around education, that your ability to do that means that you get your you're here places like here and that you continue to educate yourself because what you want to do to some for somebody is offer them yourself in the long term right so what also people are doing is they're coming in and out of um aliopathic medic medical model in which they're not feeling particularly supported which helps with the catastrophizing because they're getting lots of different messages and they're not really getting consistent see with um, a GP or anybody that they are able to see. So we want to kind of make sure that we're clear about what we can do for rotator cuffs. Exactly. Um, so education, massively important. Um, also around a very common thing that can happen um, is this activity avoidance. So people stop doing things, you know, so they might um, so they avoid activity, which leads to deconditioning, which leads to pain. Yeah. So we get this vicious cycle. Yeah. Um, it can also lead to a vicious cycle in terms of emotions as well. So pain leads to, uh, you know, different emotions, depression, which leads to increased pain. Yeah. So we're aiming to kind of break into those cycles and really, start to get what we call a victorious cycle where what you're saying to people is you uh, increase activity within a pain-free range. So really every day you're trying to do a little bit more, um, but if it starts hurting, go back to the activity level um, of the day before. So Karen's asking about time frame, um, and Donna wants to know when we can start using ice. And although Rachel will have a probably more specific answer around time frame, I think points back to the biopsychosocial model. So if there's social and psychological places, you know, segments are in good good health, yeah. then the biological will be much quicker. So if we're talking about a sprain or a strain, it shouldn't really be more than three months, you know, six months max, yeah. um, because you're looking at what's physiologically possible. If people start catastrophizing and also they can't stop the offending activity because it might be work related or life related, then we can see a shoulder injury going on for, you know, the frozen shoulder we know is 18 months. So something less than that. And also it depends on intervention. So if they're seeing a Jing trained clinical massage therapist or a different type of therapist who's equally trained, we should be able to reduce that time in half. 
but you have to take it yeah, into all yeah, those yeah. parts into consideration. Yeah. Um, Donna, in terms of when uh, we use eyes, um, definitely advice seems to be not to use ice if there's any swelling um so it's okay as a pain reliever in more of those kind of chronic conditions um but often actually heat is more useful um in the in the chronic conditions so there's actually less of a place for ice um you know it seems the current research is sort of showing um, we also need to remember the social factors. So uh, unfortunately, pain also favours those who are disadvantaged. So um, you're more likely to experience chronic pain if you've got lower education, low income and are unemployed. Um, black and minority ethnic communities, so people of colour also experience chronic pain more than white people, um, as do the LGBTQIA community. So those are also factors to take into account um, when we're looking at all right, so just to explain about pain, it's just an excuse to have a model of uh, Trinity in there, those of you who are Matrix fans. Um, so in chronic conditions, we really need to be looking less at about trying to heal the tissue and more actually about the role of the central nervous system. Um, so there was a, a, a research paper on pain. Uh, Mel Zak is a prominent pain researcher called From the Gate to the Neuromatrix. Um, his work has been taken up by pain researchers Butler and Mosley, who I suggest you seek out. They're very um, great. Uh, uh, Lorimer Mosley has got a great YouTube video, Why Things Hurt. Um, so what we have to realize is that the brain decides whether something hurts or not 100% of the time with no exception. So our brains are much more involved in our perception of the pain um, than we previously thought. So as a therapist, we're not just working with the tissues, we're also working with people's attitudes um, and, uh, you know, their thoughts, feelings around their pain condition. So our old model of pain, we stuck our foot in the fire and we we're an angry cherub. We just get pain signals going to our brain. What we know now from pain research is that, yes, those signals can go to the pain, to the brain signaling danger, but we can also get these top the top down signals which modulate that experience of pain. So if we have a good attitude about the pain, um, if we're not depressed or anxious, or you know we have more helpful beliefs, then we're less likely to um, experience pain um, from any kind of chronic pain situation. And one thing that happens a lot in chronic pain is this idea around central sensitization. So that's almost where the spinal cord and the brain act like a faulty amplifier, which actually turn up the volume of the pain signals. This can be very extreme in conditions like fibromyalgia, which is actually much more a disease of the nervous system or disorder of the nervous system than it is around the tissues. And interestingly, if you're a massage therapist or a physio or a chiropractor dealing with chronic pain, Central sensitization is a feature of most of the things we see mm. in clinic, like back pain, neck pain, whiplash, carpal tunnel, frozen shoulder headaches, TMJ, fibromyalgia, and some quite clear research around that. So we always have to remember that we're dealing with uh, people's thoughts and feelings uh, when we are working um, with. So for those of you who are joining Jing for the first time, you can see we have a lot to say. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to teach a lot. And so um, as part of the, ro you know, rotator cuff, like all, this is all part of an ACMT, an advanced clinical massage therapy qualification, as that we work through all the musculoskeletal issues and pains and pathologies. Um, and, you know, our time, oh my gosh, if we could have you forever, we would. So if you're interested in learning more with us, those deals are there. I'm just aware of the time. I saw there's a couple of questions. Somebody wanted to ask about a full AC replacement. Um, and does that person want to mute themselves, unmute themselves? Because it was a question or what I kind of got a sense of was the entire joint had been replaced. Am I still here? You're still there, but I'm trying to get oh, the okay. person who's I'm question. frozen on my end. No, you're perfect with your yellow flags, the attitude, beliefs, diagnosis. I mean, any joint recover, any joint replacement obviously is going to have a massive effect. We need to know what was replaced and what their range of motion is concerned. But what I would say is when people have a surgical intervention, um, 
we have to dial it back to what that surgical intervention is. And so when something is replaced either with bone, I'm sorry, either with metal or with something that's more um, malleable, what we have to also be mindful is all the scarring that happens around yeah. that. So what we're trying to do at all these phases is increase mobility in a pain-free range and then increase strength of the muscles that might have been affected when people are able to. So things like um, PNF stretching, resisted work, um, getting people to show you what they can do, um, you know, that's great. People are interested in, yeah, remedial massage courses is what we teach here. Um, and in fact, in at the first instance, when we wrote these courses, they were holistic medical massage courses. So it's just kind of having a sense about being a medic um, and knowing all the different elements. And then there was another question I saw about a plate um, within the shoulder. So I need a bit more intel to be able to answer the question. So if you want to type it or unmute yourself or open for it, and then I'll- that was Oh, there that you go. You're a person. Great. Go ahead. That was Hello. Hello. No, gone again. Okay. Maybe we can take that question at the end. I'll just. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. All right. Um, Sorry. So I've left. Oh, go on. He's... Sorry. You're kind of in and out. If you can type it in the box, maybe, because I don't think- A little bit more in... detail and then we'll work it through. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right, I'll do that. Oh, okay, great. great. All right. Um, so how do we assess these psychosocial factors? So if you have got a chronic condition, uh, we encourage our therapists to ask questions around what are called yellow flags. So we all know about red flags, they're danger signals. Um, so you want to be asking your client questions around their attitudes, their beliefs, uh, whether there's any compensation. Sometimes if people are involved in a compensation claim. Interestingly, that actually means they might experience more pain if they've had a diagnosis and their feelings around that, their emotions, their family setup and also their work setup. So these are some of the factors that um, can actually uh, give you some intel into whether um, those factors are actually affecting the person's pain condition. Um, there's actually a free sheet on the website that Danielle might be able to find um, that can uh, orientate you towards some questions. So I'm going to whip onto some uh, techniques um, about how we actually work with things um, in Jing. Um, one of the big things we do in Jing is actually with chronic conditions around the role of trigger points in chronic pain. So what we've found, trigger points are small knots in muscles um, that can cause referred pain. Um, and one of the things that trigger points can do is to actually mimic rotator cuff problems. So sometimes they can actually, maybe there isn't a, an issue with the muscle, but the trigger points are causing referred pain. They can actually cause rotator cuff problems or they can complicate rotator cuff problems. So if there has been a strain or a sprain, you can often get uh, trigger points building up in the muscles afterwards, um, which cause pain. So one of the things we do in the Jing method is to actually um, treat trigger points. I'll show you in a minute how we do that. The main muscles we'll be looking at are those sits muscles. So the supraspinatus trigger points can cause that pain down the arm. And that's with no damage, right? Infraspinata trigger points can cause pain down the back of the arm. Teres minor can cause pain on the back of the arm. And um, teres major, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it can actually cause pain sort of on the top of the shoulder. And subscapularis can actually cause pain down the front and the back of the arm. So you can see how they can actually, um, you know, mimic these trigger point problems. So we've put together, we've done anything about Jing. This is the way we work. We work within a biopsychosocial model um, with a multi soft tissue approach. And we see the consultation and self care just as important as the hands on. Our methods are very outcome orientated. So we use a one to six treatment protocol to reduce pain. And our methods were born actually out of clinical experience. But um, with the book, we've actually looked into the evidence around how those techniques can work together to get a better outcome. 
We talk about the treatment sandwich. So we do a full consultation, uh, then we do the hands-on work, and then we also teach self-care, again, with the same thoughtfulness and care um, as we do the hands-on treatment. The techniques that we use within the Jing method, we remember by the mnemonic HF mass. So that's the use of heat or cold. And actually in chronic problems, we're more likely to use heat. Then we use fascial techniques. Um, then we use uh, use of trigger points. M stands for muscles and treating trigger points. We also use Eastern techniques in our work. So we use acupressure points. We then use stretching and then we teach, teach, teach for the self-care. So all of those elements are important in the Jing method. And as I say, we work in a fix in six. So here are some of the techniques that we would use. And these are all uh, featured in the shoulder girdle course that we're offering you for half price. That's only for this week, by the way. I think there's a you know, put off date for that. Um, so that's some skin rolling. Um, and these are also, you can also get this free because we're giving you the shoulder girdle chapter of the book. So if you're good at looking at pictures, you can also work from that. So skin rolling, we could do this over the back of the shoulder, um, anywhere around the joint. So we could do that first. We could also use other fascial techniques like cross hand stretches would also be helpful. Um, we would then come into treating trigger points. So those pictures are showing you how to treat trigger points in the supraspinatus. The way we work in Jing is we strip the muscle and we then look for uh, client communication. So the client will flag up if they, you feel a hot, hard or tender nodule. And we treat those trigger points two to three times within the session and once a week for up to six weeks. We'd also treat supraspinatus. So that's showing you the back of the supraspinatus. So that is below the spine of the scapula. Um, that's actually the subscapularis. That's a nice sideline technique where we're able to get the thumb. If you bring the scapula towards you, you can actually get the thumb uh, into the subscapularis there. Uh, and that again is the subscapularis. And that's another way of treating the subscapularis from supine. And that's our good friend, Terry's minor, yeah. And Terry's major. So in the Jing method, we'd, do my, we'd use hot or cold. Generally, we wanna use hot for chronic conditions, which you can do with your nice uh, TheraBand pack. Um, then we do the fascial techniques. Then we do some nice broad work. Again, we show you that on the film. Then we teach, treat the trigger points in all of the muscles around the joint. So the ones I've featured, but also we'd also do um, pec major, pec minor, uh, lat dorsi, serratus anterior. Again, we show you that on the film. Um, and then for self-care, for stretching, again, in your nice little um, pack from Therabat, from Physio, Physique, uh, Theraband. So it's really good to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles once you reduce the pain. So we can do that with the Theraband. So you can hold the TheraBand in one hand and then you can do lateral rotation out to the side. You could anchor the TheraBand on a, a door band and then do internal rotation. Yeah. And then you could also hold the TheraBand in one hand and then do the other hand for abduction. So you're just basically doing the movements of the shoulder girdle only with a TheraBand, which provides resistance and therefore it's a strengthening exercise. And the different colors of TheraBrand are harder, so you can do a progression for your client. Uh, Self-treatment um, of trigger points, either with the spiky ball or the nice cork one that Physique have um, shown you. Uh, and taping, also there's some evidence that taping is also helpful. That's a very simple taping photo. I couldn't find any of our taping photos, so I had to get this sad looking man off. We have so many fun ones. I think ours I know, are probably um, like I know we have so many fun ones. Um, so that's a very simple taping. That's just one strip of tape and then uh, a couple of strips um, kind of over that. So that is also kind of a good support. And there is some evidence that taping is, is kind of helpful. All right, so that is edited highlights. As you can see, there was lots more that we can share with you and would love to. Um, and that is pretty much on the shoulder girdle course that you can get for half price. Or uh, if you want more, more, more on the ACMT, you will get a recording of this for I think a week. 
if you want to have it forever, then join the jam, which is our membership group. It's only $29.99 a month. And there is literally hundreds of seminars like this on it. We've got loads of self-care stuff. We've got loads of pathology stuff. We've got loads of business stuff. Um, so hopefully Danielle will put a link in there of how you can sign up to the jam. Yeah, there we go. So that is our membership group. You get live sessions from me and Meg loads of times. There's a nerdy on the nerve course on there. There's a long COVID course on there. There's a mental health course on there. So much content. We've literally got hundreds of hours. So we would love to see you on that. Um, and come hang out with us. If you're not sure what course to start with, then we generally recommend the three-day foundation. Um, but if you want more advice, then our lovely Nina is usually on the phone. 01273 628 942. Uh, we will send you a follow-up email with uh, lots of helpful things on that. So you'll get all that free stuff. Do jump on and get it because I think it's only up for a week. Yeah. Um, I'm still here. Meg's still here. So if there's any questions that anybody wants to ask, we're loving the love. So thank you for that. Can't hear you, Meg. Meg's muted. Hello. Oh. Sorry, I was just saying, I'm reading through the question. Sam, just stay there. I will answer your question. I'm reading through it. It's so interesting. Thank you, everybody. It's great. I've been doing a little bit of chatting, giving people my personal number. Great. Um, <laughs> by accident. And also, it's fine. Um, it's lovely for all of your passion and energy. And yeah, just so you kind of get a sense of we do it online, but we also do it in person. And we do it any way you need it because you need to learn so that you can help your extraordinary patients and clients. And it's really, really great. Yeah. Um, and if you no, can you jump on the AC, AC, ACMT online, because, you know, that's a big 200 pounds off. Um, I mean, we'd love to have you on the full thing, but the ACMT online, Thank you know, you. so that 200 pounds off is only going to be available for like, you know, a week or so. So we'd love to have you on that. Yeah. We're going to send you loads of emails, but the best thing to do is just call us and, um, you know, Jing is big and Jing is small. You can talk to me and Rachel, you can talk to Nina. Somebody will help you figure out what's the best course for you, um, which is super great. In fact, there comes the Nina. You're going to say, come say hi. No, she's going to call you. Say hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. And you're right, um, Penny, the, the learning never stops. So we've been at it for 30 years and we're still learning and, you know, uh, we still and our ideas change all the time so you know things that we believe 30 years ago we don't necessarily believe now so we do uh, try and keep on top and constantly evolve um, for you guys because you're great and you're dedicated and you're passionate and you want to help your people more and that's what we want to do as well yeah so come and hang out with us more if you want another fix of Jing this week our BTEC level six graduates are presenting their dissertations on Thursday on an online conference. It's pay what you feel. So you can pay as little as five pounds um, for that full day conference. And there's some wonderful research on there. So um, we would love to, we'd love to have you on that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you join the jam, then you get me or Meg most weeks or a wonderful guest speaker um, if we're not there. Yeah. So thank you. Let us know what you want. We're always happy to put it on. Big thank you to Physique. Go and buy their stuff because they're great. Um, <laughs> you can also get a discount if you put Jing 10 in the checkout basket. Is that right, Danielle, on any Physique stuff? Um, yeah. That's right. So, Anything that's not on got another discount on it, you'll get 10% off with the code Jing 10. Yeah. Um, Miriam, we don't issue CPD certificates, but you can put it down as learning. Um, yeah, for your uh organization generally they just require you to put something down don't they so you can say you've done um, your i'm just it. people might be reading this thing about sam sam had a client who's had five ac surgeries and the condition seems to be getting worse and the surgery is sending to aggravate it um and i want to just say this is kind of hooking into what rachel was saying about central sensitization and i think when people have had so much intervention it starts to feel worse and worse. And I think at some point you actually want to go away from the source of the condition and go global. Um, so with that person, um, I would just almost like start afresh and work a really gorgeous global massage and then start to mobilize all the joints that are able to be mobilized so that they get some positivity and then get into the joints that are problematic um, because that sounds like their body's shutting down. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure why nobody's allowed to see me now. I sort of like I'm now in like black hole. Um, Alex is asking, uh, do you need to be certified in taping to do um, it? I mean, not in my opinion. You know, um, just make sure they're not allergic. Come on to a the course. Tape. No, you do not have. To yeah, be come on a course. It's but great. You don't have to be certified to cheat. Um, but if you um, if you join the jam, there's some taping videos on that as well. We did a taping course over last summer I think so um the stuff on there if you want I love know. that you're all still here I know it's great <laughs> I think we go 12 30 they gotta go but everybody's still in it we're in yeah. it it's great all right Kathy's asking about the 25 percent off the physique pack I assume that's in the um follow-up email is it Danielle yeah that'll all be in the email it's basically a bundle offer that they put together so when you buy all of those products together you get 25 percent off what the normal sale price would be yes and Kathy's also asking if it's age or degeneration Asian. related, how much recovery is possible. Yeah, total. Lots. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, as we say, if you remember from that research, it was a lot of people, older people with rotator cuff tears who were in no pain whatsoever. So generally in our experience, the pain is coming from trigger points, fascial adhesions, you know, strengthening the muscles and having a positive attitude. But also, I think when we are dealing um, with people who are aging and, you know, this comes from anything that's arthritic or anything in those kind of spaces, when they go and get an MRI or any kind of scan and it's confirmed that that arthritis is there or there's any degeneration, that conversation tends to end. But really, you want to ask two questions. One, are they deteriorating quicker or at an abnormal rate than anybody else their age? because then we have a problem. Um, and two, is what degeneration actually causing the pain? So it tends to be in our experience that a joint can become arthritic or there can be something else going on, like a burst or something's happening, but actually it's the fascia and the soft tissue around it that's causing the pain. So if you can do the trigger point or the cross fiber, I'm sorry, the cross hand release of the fascial work and do all the work around the biopsychosocial model, you'll get people out of pain. And we're not looking for a one hit wonder anymore in our world. We're looking for long-term clients. So you can't stop the aging process, but you can say to somebody, come to me once a month, come every three months for the rest of your life. And we can make your life easier, right? Easier and kinder and feel more alive. So just remember, we're not trying to cure anybody. We're just trying to make their quality of life so much better, which is a pretty amazing thing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that's true, Penny, right? Because <laughs> people want to feel touched and loved, right? And that's a whole other thing that they're not getting anywhere. And yeah. And all that. Um, I, just, I think as a final word, let's give a final word to Alison Bailey. Do you want to unmute yourself and tell us about your older lawn bowlers that you've um, got better? Yeah, I've, I've had loads of, over the years of lawn bowlers because my family's involved in bowling um, yeah. that have come with um, rotator cuff injuries and we've got them back on the bowling green doing what they love yeah. doing. Right. Pain was, that, was that with the gym the method, Alison? Yep, just doing <laughs> the gym method. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or just those beautiful Alvin Bailey eyes. You know what I mean? Like anything. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Well, that's great. Who knew that lawn bowling was big in Scotland? My dad's also into lawn bowling. So that's great. That's a whole client group there, isn't it? I bet they're lovely. Thank you for that. That's really good to know. All right. Well, babies are climbing the stairs. People are needing to go. You've got, you know, places to go, people to see. Uh, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you so much. We are Let's doing the, that shoulder girdle online and it will be amazing. And although it says you can have it for two years, I think you can keep it for as long as the service stays up. So, so much resources, so many great videos, so many bad jokes. Yeah. Um, on those shoulder girdle classes. They're all Megs. My joke's right now. Great. Um, we're doing another Zoom with Physique on the 19th of September, 11.30, and that's on treating post-herniated discs. So we'd love to see you all on that because you've been so great. So sign up for that one um, and tell your friends about us. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. Oh, and get on our mailing list is the main thing. I think if you signed up for this... Um, we'll make sure that you get on our newsletter email less because, uh, you know, we do lots of free things and lots of money off things. So 
Love to see you. Love body workers. You all are awesome. All, all right. right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Daniela, play us out. Ah! Sam. I can feel you, boo. I can feel you. Feel me. I can feel you.